the partisan said, this little town of Zuzenberg has been the headquarters of a Nazi outpost and we want to get it back to ourselves. Now they said, will you attack it? And you don't need to go down low because as long as you don't hit the church, you can hit anywhere you like. Our people is fully taken over by the Nazis. So just smash any building you like. So that's how Steve Schoenfeld, the famous photographer and brilliant pilot, did something that I would never, never, never have allowed. And I was leading that part of the squadron. He came to my side where he shouldn't have been, from the starboard side to the port side, where he could get the whole town and my plane and my firing rockets into a photo. So he did that. Why would I have not allowed it? Because he had three switches, all on the control tower, control column, and he could easily have, in the pressure of war, tipped the wrong one. But he didn't. And he waited until he got himself into what he thought was the right position. But he had no, go no air sight for his camera. All he had was a gun sight. So he used his gun sight and he pressed the, the camera switch and not the gun switch or the rocket switch. But one thing he forgot, and that is, I would be firing my cannon and the empty shells would hit the, would hit his plane, which they did. But it was only for a few seconds. And then I, just to keep the heads of the Nazi gunners down, and so, by holding his position, he got what is probably the greatest airstrike photo of World War II. And I had the privilege of being in it, in a photo that I would never have allowed to be taken. <laughs> and when the men, the ground crew, saw the plane that Steve Schoenfeld brought back with all those dents in all over the wings. They were disgusted with him. But when they saw the photos, they forgot about it because those dents, without those dents, the famous photograph of Susenberg would never have been in existence.